Since 2016, the number of fatal incidents involving a knife has been going up and up and no sign of slowing down. In 2018, knife crime in London spiralled out of control. It had reached a level we had never seen before. Every Before week, if not knives, every day, there was another issue. incident involving a knife being used. In 2019, we hoped for change, but we didn't have to wait too long to be disappointed. The years started with more of the same, despite the promises that the government had made in previous years. Today, the people have taken to the streets and gone to the heart of the government to say, the time for talking is over. It's now time for action. Hi, I'm Dominique Fregali and I'm coming to you today from outside 10 Downing Street in London at the anti-knife crime protest. Got straight to the news, low all the bits, sick of this basic business. Don't let you like stand up in the pits, I'm done with the boring news, watch this. We're going to have interviews with Sean Bailey a member of the Conservative Party, also members of Operation Shutdown, the anti-knife crime protest group, as well as members of the general public and youth. Um, I've been increasingly concerned about the increase in knife crime. It's not something we've seen before. I've been around policing in London for 30 years, 35 years more. Um, and I've never seen anything like what's happening with the street crime related serious violence. And so this consortium of mums have decided they want to raise awareness, they want the government to get a grip. I absolutely agree with that point of view. And so they're having a demonstration down here today. And I've decided to come down and support them. Great. And can you tell us a little bit more about Operation Shutdown? Operation Shutdown is this consortium that's been formed by a group of bereaved mums, not just from London, but across the country. Um, so mums, dads, families, friends of uh, knife crime victims, campaigners and supporters of community groups. And they formed a little consortium only about six weeks ago. This is their first event. They're just determined to get a message to the government that they need to get a grip. Yeah, I'm from Lives Instead of New Zealand. Um, I'm the founding member of the campaign, which was started because we lost um, one of our young local kids um, on our doorstep three years ago, and I realised something needed to be done about it. Since then, we've lost others, and we shouldn't be losing anybody. And no parent should go through what I've seen parents going through. I'm here to support um, Misha McPhillips. I've been supporting her as best I can for a little while now. Um, the shutdown movement, what they're trying to achieve, what they're trying to bring, you know, focus on, I think is really important. We all know about knife crime, but I think Misha's take is slightly different. It involves more the victim. She's speaking about as a mother who's lost a child. She's spoken and worked with a lot of mothers, and she's trying to bring that piece to the table. I mean, the professional word would be the ripple effect. What happens when you stab someone? She's very big on how the law deals with these things as well. And I think she she has been a strong voice, a correct voice. I just want to work to help her. Out. And do you think, in your opinion, there could be more done in schools? I mean, it can lead to mental health issues, for example. In your opinion, do you think that's okay? You see, it, it, it's different because I'm, I'm a governor of a school and I'd argue that our school does plenty to look after the well-being of children. And there's an argument about how much do you speak to children to terrorise them or support them. And there's lots of services around children as well. Could there be more? Of course there could. But it's about finding effective and appropriate services. I'd argue that schools do quite a lot. But there's charitable services that you could use. A few days ago I was at the Bank and Seller Trust and the work they do is phenomenal the way they've laid it out. I would encourage schools to use that kind of service so you get high quality service without the stress of having to do it as a school. Well, I'm here because I think I represent the youth. I'm not saying I'm the figurehead. I mean, my mum's got a event coming up in, in uh, June uh, about Youth Unity Day. And however, I just wanted to show my love to the victims and the people who fought it before me. So 
So were you inspired by anything personal to you, or was it just something you were really passionate about to do? It was just like, I realised over time, I was being replaced by the players, and it shouldn't be like that. That's when I realised it's a problem, and this is what's I mean, in your opinion, I'm trying to find, what do you think you could be done more about now? Now that you're outside, you know, you're outside Parliament, you're outside the industry, what do you think more could be done? And uh, what will be the best outcome for you for here? Out of here is everyone go home with a smile on their face because I think at the end of the day, everyone came here with the, you felt the atmosphere very emotional. However, I think we have to celebrate lives at the same time as well as um, grieve them. You know, I've been through grief in my life, however, I believe, you know, you have to come together to support. I, does it make, to have a kid, you make two to make one. It's never just one, 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 you know? So, I think we have to come together. Who would ever have believed that we would be now witnessing so many young people losing their lives through knife crime? Young people are more likely now to become the main victims as well as the main perpetrators. If we really and truly believe as a society that the children are our future, shouldn't we be doing more to protect them? How many young lives has to be lost before as a society we demand more from our government? Is our government becoming reactive instead of proactive? One thing that we should never forget, that real power lies with the people.